So maybe we've lived in the, the valley of despair long enough and to say that, you know, there, there is a, a better way to do this outreach. And we get that question all the time of, of what does challenger outreach look like? And I've got the most satisfying consulting answer for you. It depends, right? I, I don't mean to be flippant, but here's why. Um, depending on the size of your territory, whether you've got a small finite set of accounts or you're in more of a, you know, tech or services aspect of the business and you've got a ton of opportunity and a, a ton of blue ocean, um, you fall somewhere on this spectrum. Um, on the left, it's low volume, high burn risk. You're going after a finite number of large accounts. You know every important stakeholder and target across those accounts. You only have so many at bats or swings before you've, strike, you've struck out and your message needs to be nearly perfect every time. On the other side of the spectrum, your high volume, low burn risk, maybe you're an SDR, you have uh, SDRs to help you generate demand at the top of the funnel, you've got a sales engagement platform that you use to manage demand gen, you know it takes something like 17 touch points before you get the meeting, and you know the cadence is anything but linear. You've got some trial and error leeway here and you can mix it up and you can try new angles. But here's the thing, um, no matter where you fall on this spectrum, we at Challenger believe all outreach designed to initiate a commercial opportunity or relationship should inherently abide by four principles. First and foremost, we've talked about it today, unique perspective. You're offering valuable information they cannot get anywhere else to the point we just made on the conversations we're having with their peers. And in this initial outreach, you're at least alluding to the fact that you have it and would like to share it. Um, on credibility, you're able to demonstrate that information is coming from a credible source, and you're doing all of this clearly, succinctly, uh, and with breadth. Um, Amanda, on leading with a, a unique perspective, um, you know, we often say, as we mentioned, right, they have more of an opportunity uh, to mm -hmm. speak with some of their customer peers than some of the, the folks that they're talking to. Um, how have you seen this play out in practice at, at your, you know, last few organizations and your experience? Yeah, absolutely, John. You're, you're spot on. The wealth of information that sellers are gathering throughout each and every single one of their sales calls is incredibly valuable to their mm -hmm. uh, peers. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you're, in, you're always identifying some of the trend lines that you're hearing, some of the commonalities of either challenges or priorities that your prospects are telling you that they care about uh, and what they're trying to solve for, even if it may be unrelated to your product and what you're trying to solve for. It just lends to your credibility, uh, you know, being able to speak to those challenges actually from your prospect's perspective goes mm -hmm. a long way. Um, and the prospect will gain a lot more value out of the conversation in addition to um, believing that you've got a lot of credibility behind what you're speaking to.